G'day, we've done some great engineering for you. Ouch! Hi there. What was all of that with the koala bear and the steam engine and... Well, I'll give you a hint what I'm on about. If we take one of the power supplies from our competitors, you are absolutely blindfolded. You have no idea what's going on. You have no temperature, you have no limits, you have nothing. Either it's on or it's off. It's not like you can sit from at home or from the HMI or SCADA and watch the temperature, the load of it, what's the uh, amps going in, amps going out, voltage going in, voltage going out. You don't know. So that was just uh, an example of very bad engineering, like the crowd you should be hit for doing such bad engineering. Well, for you guys who don't know our concept, I'll short and fast give you an introduction to it. All our modules consist of a back plane, which can be put on a DNA, and in that way, it consists of a module. Since it's this nature, it's divided into two parts, three parts if you count the connector as well, then it naturally supports a hot plug. That means you can take out the module. So once you put this one here inside here, that means you can take it out in and out. Uh, obviously, if you've got redundant power supplies. And let's see here. Put the power supply in right here. And this is kind of like like liquid. You've got two parts. You put it together, and here this, and it goes on. Ding mountable here. And yeah, and then of course you can take in and out the modules like this. The power supply, this one here is uh, 9 to 30 volt and the next is 30 to 60. So it depends on if you're running 24 volt or 12 volt or 48 volt, it, it depends on that. What power supply you should select. And get rid of this. The power supply has uh, a lot of variables and if you want to see how to add a power supply and access those variables then check out the video where I'm adding modules because there I'm showing it but to give you a highlight of it it gives you um, the load out that means in percentage so you can see if you're loading it 50% 60% or 100% naturally we shut it down if you get over the limit we have inside it's more than 100% I can say um, it's automatically protected so if you make a short circuit it is automatically detecting that and, and shuts it down and we check that every 10 milliseconds so that's a hundred times a second we check that for you um, it's also a part of our digital cockpit so what is a digital cockpit here have a look at this car that is a digital cockpit and we have a digital cockpit as well when you add a module it doesn't matter if it is a power supply analog input digital output just a module we know, because it's our module, we know that you put it on the, uh, on the back plane and we displays it. So on the web page, there's automatically a display showing the module. There you can see the state of the module, also if they are faulty. This is how it looks like uh, when, you, when you add modules. And the next one here, it looks like if there's, you have a faulty module. It's easy, it's convenient, you're not blindfolded. So, yeah, it's not like in the old days where you had a gold one with an LED for showing the water temperature and it only shows you it was too hot. So when that was on, that means you were stranded in this side of the world. We don't have that, but um, we see a lot of people asking, oh, where's the LED? And to bring an LED on to the motor, you also need what to want to do with it. So if you're a skilled engineer, you probably would, would use the digital cockpit and see everything that's on the module. All modules show temperature and, and all these kind of things. You can also see the, what firmware is in and you can update the firmware and you can do all these things with an LED. So we take one of these here, there's 12 relays in this one. We've also got modules with 16 and 20 digital inputs. So here we've seen some of our computers cramped together, 20 or 16 small LEDs. It is so small you can't see which is on or which is uh, not on. And even if you could, you would still need the diagram to see is it good or is it bad when it is on. Because sometimes it's good and sometimes it is bad. With the Golf, the car, 
It was on, you're stranded, it's bad. Uh, if it was a horn and beacon for nuclear uh, something, then it's bad, it's on. But you need to do PLC program, you need to drawings, you need the skills to see if it's good or bad. So it's just, in my opinion, bullshit with these LEDs. It's just old fashioned. And people put that in the specs because they can't do a digital copy. Could you, would you buy a modern car which only has LEDs? You want the digital copy. You want Apple CarPlay or Google uh, MirrorLink or whatever it's called. You want all the values available for you at all time to do whatever you want with those values. Give the customer an experience they deserve and make it easier for yourself. When you do commissioning, just ask me one question. Uh, answer me one question. For the analog values, in and out, do you know what they are? No. In the copy? Yes. In the normal? For the LED? No, you don't. Power supply? Do you know what's, what's coming in and out? No, you don't. With the digital copy, you do. You can see it on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your PC. Simple as that. But, uh, for you guys who really, really love this uh, dinosaur stuff with an LED, I took this uh, little train video with the steam engine because there you have absolutely no clue what's going on. So if the pressure is too high, then I guarantee you got a bomb under your ass. So here for you dinosaurs, enjoy this steam video and just imagine what happens if the pressure is too high.